A number of years ago, a friend of mine had a kidney transplant. As she was recovering at home, I spent some time visiting with her. And it won't surprise you that during that visit, we spent some time talking about spirituality. As we had this conversation that included spirituality, she shared that things like meditation and other traditional practices just really weren't there for her. They, they, they just weren't connecting for her. But she said that where she understood her spirituality best, where the connection really happened for her, was in relationship to her dogs, to her pets. You know, some people may think this is a little flip or they don't understand this, but pets and animals can be an important part of our spiritual life. And Perhaps you think that that may not be true if you haven't had a pet. Or maybe you haven't thought about your relationship with the animal in your life. But spirituality itself is about finding that connection with something that gives us meaning, that's purposeful, that we value and in turn gives our life value. And when we begin to understand that Pets aren't something that we have. They aren't property, but they're actually living beings who are companions along our way, sharing life with us. Then we begin to understand these animals who are part of our life in a different way. So today I want to talk about pets and animals and spirituality. It's a great time while I'm talking to subscribe and to click the bell. So I grew up in a house where we had dogs. And then as I became an adult and was living on my own, I had cats as pets. Now, it's not that I like cats better than dogs or dogs better than cats. They're, they're both unique creatures. And uh, the thing that was helpful for me about cats as an adult was most of my adult life I lived alone. And I worked a lot, I traveled a lot, and so my schedule wasn't regular. Dogs depend on more regularity from a human being than cats do. Cats can be more self-sufficient. Uh, so that was how I ended up with having a cat with me the first time. And, and that was really uh, a good connection. But whether it's a dog, a cat, or I have friends who have horses, I have a friend who has a pet that's a tarantula, whatever the animal may be that is with you, think about what that relationship is about. And begin to think about it as a relationship. You know, one of the things that I've appreciated about the pets that have been part of my life is that they really draw me out of myself. Uh, they want to play, whether it's throwing a ball or a frisbee to a dog or, you know, coming up with some sort of uh, hunting game with a cat. Or there was that cat that I had that I taught how to fetch. That was a lot of fun. But the animals keep us at play. They pull us out of our serious side and allow us to be more engaged in a different side of ourselves than what other adults allow us to be. And that's a really great thing because it really opens up our creativity, opens us to thinking about things in a different way. It's a real gift, a real grace. Pets also have this way of seeking out relationship with us. You know, even when an animal is disappointed with us, when an animal has been hurt or frustrated because of whatever the reason is, that animal still comes back to us. They want to have a relationship with us. And that's even true with animals that have been abused. Animals that have been seriously abused, when they're put in a new context, and when people begin to treat them in a way that's respectful and caring, they begin to open up again and begin to relate to another person again. And that's a really beautiful thing. You know, animals aren't going to say, I don't like what you did, so I'm never going to speak to you again. Or you're toxic, therefore I'm cutting you out of my life. 
Animals aren't like that. Animals don't make those kinds of distinctions. They accept us for who we are and seek out a relationship with us and, and continue to try to pull us out. And in that process, they recognize what we're going through. They know when we're stressed, when we're tired. They even recognize when we're ill. You've probably seen in the news how dogs were sniffing out COVID-19 in individuals. And there are dogs who are taught to sniff out cancer. So they are, animals have this ability that's beyond what we understand. And they seek us out, they, they are aware of who we are and what's happening for us and continue to be in relationship with us in much more faithful ways than we tend to be with each other. So I think it's really in that that we have a lot to learn from animals about being unconditional with each other, about caring for each other in authentic ways and for being supportive of each other. But I think what's really worth considering is the way that animals can be spiritual directors for us. When I think particularly about my cats, the cats that have been part of my life have had the ability to just set aside everything else and be present in the moment. We spend so much time trying to learn meditation and mindfulness. Animals do it naturally. They know how to be in the moment, in the here and now, and appreciate what's happening in that moment. That's a way in which animals can really help us understand what it is to be present and to be healthy in the world, to be focused and mindful. In that, they can be really great teachers for us. So I think it's helpful for us to consider the way that animals draw us out of ourselves, continue to engage us to play, as well as can teach us about the spiritual life by being mindful and being present in the moment. Thanks for your time today. I really appreciate it. Share some thoughts about animals in your life and stories you've shared with them in the comments. And if I get some comments and questions, maybe I'll tell you about that cat I taught how to fetch. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, share it with others, and really have a good day and a good journey. Thanks.